Okay, so see those taxis? When one's in the air, the other one becomes in the air, which is totally wrong. So I'm trying to debug that behavior. It doesn't always happen though, which is weird. It only seems to happen when they're kind of spawned at the same time. I don't exactly know. If we go to our debug, Just take a couple lines and we can print up a couple values. Um, I think first I want to check if, um, shit. are killing me. God, my allergies are freaking killing me. Okay, so taxi one and taxi two. Taxi's one that uh, needs to jump. Um, I think that's what it's called. Shit, man. I gotta blow my nose. Yeah, needs to jump. Needs. So it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it is, the bug has to do with our needs to jump value, because that's just remaining false. Um, we take a look, uh, maybe it's dot flapped. So let's see, dot flapped. flapped either so it's like what's going on so when do we render wings up it's just when it's in the air so it might be grounded Yeah, let's check grounded. Let's see.
well, this is, um, that's, just because that's changing doesn't mean it's um, incorrect. If they were both tethered to each other, even though they had different um, walking states, I would be worried about it, but they seem to actually be working appropriately. Yeah, see, because the the one the one taxi on the ground here was still grounded, but it's it it rendered the the wrong frame. Um, so I think it's we just have to look at what we're doing with our viewport in our taxi class. Let's see if we can find anything. Nope. Nope. Very few times we do this. Okay, first time. That is uh, when we bottom collide the ground platform. Um, we're, we're at our first frame. That's not where it's messing up. It's not where it's messing up. If animation timer is smaller than zero, go ahead. Um, set our frame. See, this is kind of, kind of crazy because we're doing. So when we call the uh, set viewport function on a drawable, the first uh, argument is an X position for the quad of our sprite atlas. Um, we had to do this self.frame plus the width times itself dot frame minus one. That does is give us a X offset of a it's a little more complicated uh, than it should be because I was getting a bug where if I didn't give any buffer on either side of the sprite, uh, it was getting some artifacting. So this is just a way to index um, the, 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 the quads even though they're one pixel apart from one another. So we're modifying it by a plus self frame. So that frame four has four pixels of buffer because every frame has got a pixel of buffer on the end of it. So that's why it looks so weird. But this doesn't explain why we're still um, rendering the wrong thing. Um, I'm going to check what our animation timer might be. See if the error might be in there somewhere. We don't need to do that. We can just know what we're debugging to save us some time, but. So the animation timer is uh, very fast because that's how we coded it. So I don't think that's going to be helpful for us debugging. Um, go to the top. Yeah, it's 0 0.06 seconds. So every 0 0.06 seconds we're modifying our self frame. Um, maybe let's see if our self frame is, I mean, we know our self frame is backed it up.
guess the question is, are those always the same? Taxi object has a self dot frame, so they should be um, the. F Let's see when we're changing the self dot frame. modifying the frame um, when it's smaller than animation timer uh, so what we can do is reset our animation timer let's actually just say hey this is gonna be a whole one second we can write that um, it's gonna be 0.06 here when we switch it back but for now let's get one frame a second let's see still messing up so so the frame goes one through four when they're walking but what the heck is happening yeah you know we i think we only need to Modify our self dot frame if we're, no, uh, yeah, if we're if we're grounded. If we're grounded, see, look, we say, look at this, we say, we say this is grounded animation, but we're not actually, um, we're not actually doing it only if we're grounded, because right here, if we're not grounded, go ahead and render the up ones, sure. But we want to only set, we want to only increment our frame if we are grounded. So I think that's actually might be what it is uh, messing up. So we could say, hey, if we are self dot grounded, then go ahead, set our viewport to our current frame, and then modify it, increment it, and then. Um, Otherwise, if you're not grounded, set it to the wings in the air. Still messing up. See, why? Fuck, why, why? And what's really weird there is they're actually different um, frames now. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Well, no, it does make sense because we're only changing the frame if we're grounded, so... is happening see like if we watch we watch the top taxi here it jumps when the bottom one is is falling and I there's no why would they be tethered like that why would they be tethered to each other like that I don't get that at all we got to be modifying all of our taxis at some point if we're grounded or something incorrectly. What is going on? Really hard to track this down. Let's print up the correct values here so we don't confuse any more than we already are. We gotta be modifying our taxis, all of our taxis, somehow that's messing this up. Now, we only do that once, that shouldn't be it. Um, that shouldn't be it. What the heck? Jockey's not in the graveyard. Our player collides with a jockey, then we take a 
this out. Okay, good. Okay. Why would they be synced? Why would they be synced? Doesn't make any sense to me. I'm so confused still. So confused. I don't know what value is happening. I don't know what value is changing to modify what what viewport we're actually fucking up. I guess if we go even even tinier, like hey, we know the um, I think it's flapped is the downwing, so this is the upwing. So if we take out the upwing, is it still messing up? Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, did I save that? What the heck? See, our viewport should never be set to the upwing at the moment. Let me see. Okay. So it's right here. If we're not grounded, so we're in the air, and we're not flapped, then wings go up. But if we're not grounded and we are flapped, wings go down. Which at the moment, we're never becoming flapped, so that should never pop up. So the problem is here with this viewport. Why? Why is one see and this doesn't make any sense. So the only two variables that we're we're switching with this is our grounded and our flapped. Like that's the only thing that's changing this viewport to our, our wings up. And that's what's crap that's what's messing up. It's like that's Looking at our bottom collision is just really slow. Um. you is I mean, I'm just so confused because if we look at the line that's responsible it's the viewport for the up wings which only happens if we're in the air and we're not flapped so see why would that top one become unflapped or 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 flapped or why would it render why would it render the up wing? When the bottom one is messing up, it's not making any sense to me. Oh. We're, we're doing the same quad. We're modifying the same quad. We need a we don't we need our own quad. Oh yeah. See, we're we're modifying the same quad. We need to give ourselves our own quad. Um, yeah, we need our own quad. That's why it's messing up. Okay. So now if we go to, um, yeah, taxi one quad, that's what it is. I don't know why I was doing that. But yeah, 
taxi one sprite is actually we just set our own quad to become the proper thing and then in our render we need to replace taxi one sprite with our own quad as well but then I should fix it so if we go to taxi one wow we have it everywhere we have it everywhere We got our own quad now. I'm really hoping this fixes it. Because uh, in my brain it makes sense. But it's weird because I couldn't get the, the bug to always work. So I don't get why. I think it's because we didn't always have more than one taxi on, on, on the screen. So it was hard to find it. See luck, and then instead of the taxi one sprite, we're actually doing our self quad here. And then same with here. Okay, let's see. <laughs> yes, that's it. That fixed it. That fixed it. Fuck yeah. So, replace our animation timer to 0.06, and then also, also, oh my, no, no. come on man, 0.06. faster great cool yes yes that's it that's it yes okay now um, uh, okay now all we got to do is we go to our uh, play state uh, we can go ahead Turn off our debugging for now. Um, that was a, a tricky bug to find, but it's like a rookie mistake. I don't know. At one point, I had just assigned a global variable to be the quad, which was my bad. Um, it, and seriously, like it was the only thing that wasn't a self object in the init for that class. So that was really just a silly mistake. What I want to do, what I want to do is take off those taxi spawns that we've got going on right now. So when we do our taxi, um, come on, dude. Okay, here, let's just calling this out for now we might just delete that whole thing if the if we're fairly confident the bug is fixed but then don't we do this anywhere else no okay okay so now what we need to do is go to our vulture spawns turn those back on those turn those back on Now, we should have our three vultures again. And then the thing is, if I uh, if I hit V here, and then kill, oh, well, 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 well. Let's redo that. V, gotta wait till they're done spawning. Wait till they're done spawning. V, okay. don't want to collect those eggs. Uh, I want to spawn a bounder with B instead of the Shadow Lords. So 
so tier. Actually, a one for our bounder. Okay. Gotta wait till they spawn. And then I can hit B. And then if I kill... That was my bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Okay. Okay. Shit. Okay. Do it again. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get three eggs to hatch at the same time. Basically. So kill them basically at the same time. Let them all hatch and then watch the taxis and see if they're still conjoined all jacked up or not. Nice. They're not. That's sick. Okay. We fixed that bug. We fixed that bug. Very happy. Cool. We hop over to our notes. Um... Right here. Sometimes two taxis animations get locked in with one another. Solve. Cool. So, as far as tomorrow plans, um, ensure midair bonus remains false upon egg catch. I'm pretty sure this does. We fixed that because any time we did that a couple episodes ago. Then we also confirmed that. So, the next things we have on our list are add the wave two ticks, add wave two spawns, raise the lava level. <sighs> what is this? Check. Better way to check if all enemy objects hatched is true. That's for the wave up. Um. Okay, so let's let's just take a peek at this real quick. Um, if we search for a dot hatched or a wave increment, or do we increment our wave? Wave gets wave. No. We not incrementing our wave if everything is dead. I thought we already added that. Let's see. Anytime we ask our dot wave, wave one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, find a more elegant solution. Yeah. Okay, so the problem here is how we're determining if we should move to the next wave is we're asking if every single one of our eggs is collected inside a nested if condition here. So the reason this isn't so um, elegant is for every wave we'd have to do another thing just like this instead of a function. Um, but also, um, we have to ask this every time, every time, every frame. So every single frame in wave one we're saying, hey, is eggs one collected? Hey, is eggs two collected? Hey, is eggs three collected? Okay, wave two. Every single frame we're asking that. So that's why it's not so elegant. So a way we could kind of do this smarter is put it into a function so we can use it for all our waves. And that would include something like, since there's three objects, three enemy objects in our first wave, there's a three nested for loop here, but what we might want to do, oh, see, I mean, at the end of the day, we kind of have to ask it every frame, don't we? No. If, I don't know, yeah, we kind of have to ask it every frame at some point, because it has to be able to detect the instant all our eggs are collected so unless anytime we get I don't know I don't know what the more elegant solution here is 
we could fairly easily put it into a function, but I'm wanting to do something smarter also. Instead of a nested if condition like this. Not exactly sure what that looks like though. Um, I guess we'll sleep on it. This is uh, 150 in our play state, so I'll just leave our NeoVim here, I guess. But. If we take a look at our git diff. All we really did is change our global taxi one sprite to be a self quad, and then we render the self quad within our um, taxi class animation. So that fixed our bug. And then we took out our tester taxis and we inserted our um, vultures again, and then we change it so that V makes bounders instead of shadow lords. Um, but we fixed the bug, so that's huge. We found it, it was tricky, but we found it. Silly mistake, but just goes to show how, how much work it can take to find a stupid mistake you made, but it's okay. Git add everything, commit message saying, say this we modified taxi quad to be self field instead of global drawable and just like that one more bug fix in the bag so yeah tomorrow we might we might work on that uh, wave function, or we might just work on the retractable platform, or we might work on the raising lava level, or we might work on the print our wave two text. Um, so there's a bunch of things we can work on, um, but our enemies are basically done. Like all the hard, all the hard hardest stuff is done. Our player controls are done, our um, enemy AI and point system is all worked out. So all that's left to do is to hash out the waves and then um, maybe add like a high score thing, but then that's it. So yeah, the toughest part is gonna be that uh, platform retraction on a wave two um, and then having the hitboxes um, adapt for that. But I don't think that's as hard as I think it is. I think that'll actually be pretty easy, and then um, then all we have to do is basically assign, hey, if you're on wave 2, spawn 4, if you're on wave 3, spawn 5, if you're on wave 5, whatever, then that's an egg round, so we'll have to code the spawn points for the eggs for the egg round, but that should be, should be pretty easy. Um, so yeah, we got the hardest stuff done, so I'm pretty happy about this, then we can finally move on. Um, I'll catch you tomorrow for some more programming.